Kiora. My name is Mark, and I'm honored to be part of the second cohort of the Edmund Hillary Fellowship, and really to draw from Sir Ed's inspirational life and a commitment to service. Um, it's been an interesting journey. I first came to New Zealand over a year and a half ago and traveled over 4,000 kilometers from Russell in the north to Te Anu and Milford Sound and elsewhere in the south. And it was, it was an incredible experience and it made me want to come back and, and be in New Zealand. Um, this was before the Edmund Hillary Fellowship was announced. And so when I heard about it, I knew I had to apply and try to join this terrific community. Um, and this time we've spent together this week, getting to know each other in the welcome week for the second cohort has been very meaningful and very exciting about what comes next. Um, I was really drawn to EHF and you know, what it tries to do in terms of its incubation nation to sort of inspire uh, innovation and uh, to draw on the amazing sort of natural beauty and entrepreneurial spirit here in New Zealand. Um, now, I have a vision of really focusing on uh, climate resilience collaboration made easy. Um, now, the made easy part is really the key. Right? Because if something's not easy, it might be hard, it might still be worth doing, but you're not going to get necessarily everyone to do it. Right? Um, and so with that in mind, I've really sort of focused on uh, thinking about different solutions and drawing on my past experience. Um, the idea of sort of making this challenge uh, easy, it really draws on my 20 years of, of work in this space uh, as a social entrepreneur, uh, including the last 13 years leading a US-based nonprofit organization I founded, uh, the Sustainable Endowments Institute. Um, what we've tried to do is really um, break down and, and, and sort of try to tackle the challenge of looking at how institutions uh, want to aspire towards reaching sustainability goals and sort of the reality of where they are and, and where they're going. Um, 11 years ago, my organization created uh, the first green report card of its type to evaluate and, and grade universities across North America on their sustainability practices. Uh, we looked at over 300 institutions across that region. And what we found was there was some good work happening, but there was a pretty large disparity between uh, the goals and, and the opportunities um, that existed and the actions that these institutions were taking. Uh, but over the course of five years, we did five editions of this report card. Uh, terrific things happened, to ch uh, happened. And among other things, uh, more than three times the number of institutions uh, committed to carbon neutrality uh, at the university level. And what we then saw was now that these commitments existed, like here in New Zealand with the 2050 goal, um, it was a matter of taking uh, the commitment and turning it into action. And sort of two of the areas that were, there was, I think, the most need and opportunity was around looking at the finance side and figuring out better models for getting capital to flow into the space, and also on the data side, right? Data help can help drive action. But everyone, when we looked around, was still using spreadsheets. Spreadsheets, spreadsheets, more spreadsheets to track all of this information and not sharing it in a collaborative way. Um, and so, you know, where we are today is we really wanted to uh, make a difference um, in, in helping New Zealand and engaging with the community here to, to do more around this. So my project for the Edmund Hillary Fellowship is called the Sustainable Impact Hub. Uh, and very simply, the idea behind the Sustainable Impact Hub is to help uh, New Zealand businesses and organizations get easy access to capital. Again, made easy, right? Uh, get easy access to capital and to find the best contractors to actually do the work because not everyone knows how to install new lighting systems or new heating and cooling systems or how to weatherize their own buildings. Um, and so the idea behind the Sustainable Impact Hub is to really to connect these dots to make it so that those that do have capital, banks, philanthropies, individuals, can actually invest in your own communities um, and get a good rate of return at the same time. And also, on the contractor side, the existing contractors can get more projects, can create more jobs, and uh, help out in the local community, improving the quality of the, the life and quality of the building stock in these places. So there's a tremendous, um, a tremendous opportunity here. Uh, the Sustainable Impact Hub technology is based on an existing GRITS web platform that my nonprofit launched four years ago. It's currently in use by over 400 institutions across New Zealand, Australia, the US, and Canada. Um, the great news is, is that about 75% of the technology needed to build and launch this Sustainable Impact Hub, we've already built and is in use as part of the GRITS platform. So we're already three quarters of the way there and we're just getting started. Um, and so really what, the, what it comes down to is, there's a lot of advantage here, but really what it comes down to is, um, is, the, is the people and focusing on 
um, how we can sort of empower everyone to get involved in this. And so my, my colleague and cohort one friend, uh, Rod Oram and I are leading a session this afternoon on this question of you know, how do we reach this uh, net carbon zero goal by 2050? And so if you're interested in this, I would encourage you to, to join this afternoon in the conversation and get involved. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity and uh, there's a lot still to learn, but I'm really honored and excited to be part of this community. Kia ora. Kia ora.